Section 4 Nature Teaching Chapter 10 God in Nature His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of His praise. Upon all created things is seen the impress of the Deity. Nature testifies of God. The susceptible mind, brought in contact with the miracle and mystery of the universe, cannot but recognize the working of infinite power. Not by its own inherent energy does the earth produce its bounties, and year by year continue its motion around the sun. An unseen hand guides the planets in their circuit of the heavens. A mysterious life pervades all nature, a life that sustains the unnumbered worlds throughout immensity, that lives in the insect atom, which floats in the summer breeze, that wings the flight of the swallow, and feeds the young ravens, which cry, that brings the bud to blossom, and the flower to fruit. The same power that upholds nature is working also in man. The same great laws that guide alike the star and the atom control human life. The laws that govern the heart's action, regulating the flow of the current of life to the body, are the laws of the mighty intelligence that has the jurisdiction of the soul. From him all life proceeds. Only in harmony with him can be found its true sphere of action. For all the objects of his creation the condition is the same, a life sustained by receiving the life of God, a life exercised in harmony with the Creator's will. To transgress his law, physical, mental, or moral, is to place oneself out of harmony with the universe, to introduce discord, anarchy, ruin, to him who learns thus to interpret its teachings, all nature becomes illuminated. The world is a lesson book. Life is a school. The unity of man with nature and with God, the universe, dominion of law, the results of transgression, cannot fail of impressing the mind and molding the character. These are lessons that our children need to learn. To the little child not yet capable of learning from the printed page or of being introduced to the routine of the schoolroom, nature presents an unfailing source of instruction and delight. The heart, not yet hardened by contact with evil, is quick to recognize the presence that pervades all created things. The ear is yet undulled by the world's clamor, is attentive to the voice that speaks through nature's utterances. And for those of older years, needing continually its silent reminders of the spiritual and eternal, nature's teaching will be no less a source of pleasure and of instruction. As the dwellers in Eden learned from nature's pages, as Moses discerned God's handwriting on the Arabian plains and mountains, and the child Jesus on the hillsides of Nazareth, so the children of today may learn of him. The unseen is illustrated by the seen. On everything upon the earth, from the loftiest tree of the forest to the lichen that climb, clings to the rock, from the boundless ocean to the tiniest shell on the shore, they may behold the image and superscription of God. So far as possible, let the child from his earliest years be placed where this wonderful lesson book shall be opened before him. Let him behold the glorious scenes painted by the great master artist upon the shifting canvas of the heavens. Let him become acquainted with the wonders of earth and sea. Let him watch the unfolding mysteries of the changing seasons and, in all his works, learn of the Creator. In no other way can the foundation of a true education be so firmly and surely laid. And yet even the child, as he comes in contact with nature, will see cause for perplexity. He cannot but recognize the working of antagonistic forces. It is here that nature needs an interpreter. Looking upon the evil manifest in the natural world, all have the same sorrowful lesson to learn. An enemy hath done this. Matthew 13:28. Only in the light that shines from Calvary can nature's teaching be read aright. Through the story of Bethlehem and the cross, let it be shown how good is to conquer evil, and how every blessing that comes to us is a gift of redemption. 
In briar and thorn, in thistle and tear, is represented the evil that blights and mars. In singing bird and opening blossom, in rain and sunshine, in summer breeze and gentle dew, in ten thousand objects in nature, from the oak of the forest to the violet that blossoms at its root, is seen the love that restores. And nature still speaks to us of God's goodness. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. This is the message that in the light from the cross may be read upon all the face of nature. The heavens declare his glory. The earth is full of his riches.